Months after Pablo Sandoval turned 28, he caught the final out of his third World Series. A few weeks later, he signed a $95 million contract. His Giants tenure included all-star appearances, walk-off heroics, and a World Series MVP. He left the Giants as a hero to the people of San Francisco. Less than one year later, he was the most hated athlete in Boston. His weight surpassed his batting average, injuries kept him off the field, and he was benched for going on his phone during a mid-game bathroom break. His most well-known highlight as a Red Sox was when his belt exploded mid-swing. I've got a special guest coming on in a few minutes to help explain just how embarrassing his Red Sox tenure was. A former trainer said that his food addiction was like alcoholism and that he once gained 21 pounds in 21 days. Things got so bad that the Giants banned hotels from serving him room service. Booze from home fans, questions about his attitude and poor play, and an unceremonious release halfway through his huge contract should have signaled the end of his career. But Sandoval still plays professionally today. After leaving Boston, he returned to the city that loves him, won a fourth World Series ring, and even hit a six-run homer? I'm usually not a huge fan of career summary videos, but Pablo Sandoval is unique in every way. He was almost a main character of baseball during the 2010s, a villain to some, and a hero to many. He was more talked about than most superstars of his era. I'll be covering every dizzying high and embarrassing low of his career that I could find, starting off with his rookie year. Sandoval made his MLB debut on August 14, 2008, three days after his 22nd birthday. He began the year at high A ball, but after a couple of months there and a couple of months in double A, the Giants recalled him to the big club. He nearly evenly split his first 41 MLB games at catcher, first base, third base, and pinch hitting. Five of his nine catching starts as a rookie came with Barry Zito on the bump. Zito's contract was becoming an albatross, and the wheels were falling off during August of 2008. He was 6-15 with an ERA approaching 6, but in his first start with Sandoval behind the dish, he threw 7 shutout innings. Then he threw 8 innings of 3-run ball, again with Sandoval catching. In his first 4 games paired with Sandoval, Zito went 3-0 with a 2.17 ERA across 29 innings. Beyond helping Zito pitch at his best, Sandoval's relationship with Zito is responsible for his most recognizable alias. During a September 19th game at Chavez Ravine, Sandoval made an acrobatic play to avoid a tag at home and score. Because of his short and stout frame and sneaky agility, Zito coined the nickname Kung Fu Panda, based on the Jack Black movie that came out earlier that summer. Turns out Zito did more for the Giants marketing department than their pitching staff. <laughs> Panda caught his buddy three more times in 2009, and again, Zito excelled with his new battery mate, but an elbow injury in May moved Panda off the position for good. In the 14 total games that Sandoval caught in MLB, the metrics paint his defense in a pretty good light. Sandoval found his home at third. The infield suited him. He grew up wanting to play shortstop like his hero and fellow Venezuelan Omar Vizquel. A natural lefty, Panda actually taught himself to throw righty so he could play Vizquel's position. Oh look! He's playing next to you today. He also wanted to hit like Andres Galarraga, who he met during the Venezuelan Home Run Derby in 2008, before taking down Miggy in the finals. Panna spent most of 2009 at third base, playing all but nine games despite the elbow injury. And boy did he hit like the big cat. He put up a 330 average with 25 homers and a 144 OPS plus, earning a seventh place MVP finish. He and Juan Uribe were the only two Giants regulars to finish as above average hitters, and they still only missed the playoffs by a few games. Tim Lincecum and Matt Cain were two of the top young starters in MLB. Prospects Madison Bumgarner and Buster Posey debuted, and at the center of it all, Pablo Sandoval was set to anchor the Giants lineup entering the new decade. High drive! The Giants won 92 regular season games in 2010, making their first playoff appearance since 03. This was the timeline that they'd been planning for ever since Bonds retired. Everything was coming together. Everything except Sandoval. His season OPS, even after finishing April with a one dot, was over 200 points lower than in 2009, and his cold hitting continued into October. In Game 1 of the NLDS against the Braves, the Giants pulled off a 1-0 victory on the back of a dominant Tim Lincecum. Panda went 0-2 for 2 with the walk. It all fell apart during Game 2. Collides with Buster Posey. And Sandoval looks to be shaken up. It didn't appear that Pablo Sandoval was calling loudly enough for the ball, if he was calling for it at all. Strikes out, and a slow hit bounding ball to third. Sandoval safe at first base. 
as Huff came off the bag, a run will score. Sandoval's throwing error led to a huge game-tying rally by Atlanta. He got one more at-bat before being pulled for a defensive replacement. The Giants lost the game in extras, largely because of the error, and Sandoval didn't see the field for the remainder of the series. Without him, the Giants pulled out two more tight victories, both come from behind 3-2 wins in Atlanta, to advance to the NLCS. Sandoval also sat game one of the series, another Giants victory. He got in the second game as a pinch hitter, but was again benched during game three. Up 2-1 to one in the series, facing the Phillies' weakest starter, manager Bruce Bochy decided to try to get the Panda going. Yeah. Line drive. Foul. I think you could make a case that caught the outside part of the line. It appeared to me that it did. Line drive in the left center field, and the Giants are back on top. Sandoval into second base for the double, and the Giants take the lead. Oh, the Pandas fired up at second base. Sandoval finally delivered. His double was one of the biggest plays of the Giants' victory, putting them up 3-1 to one in the series and fully swinging the momentum in their favor. Panda got to play again during Game 5 and he got another base hit, but he also made another ugly throwing error from third. Besides the double, Panda's at-bats weren't good enough to run him out there again with his throwing troubles. After playing 305 regular season games for the club over the last two years, Sandoval watched from the bench as the team he was supposed to anchor sailed all the way to the World Series. He only played in one World Series game, the H.E. in Arlington and going 0-3 with a strikeout and double play, and the Giants only lost to the Rangers. That postseason, the Giants went 2-4 and in games he played. They were 9-0 and when he rode the bench undefeated without him, and it's still probably one of the most memorable moments of his life. Look, there he is, one of the first guys out of the dugout when they won, but on some level, it had to be bittersweet. He knew he could have done more. By the end of 2010, Sandoval weighed in at nearly 280 pounds. It was a brutal failure for what the Giants called Operation Panda. After his breakout 2009, the Giants had Sandoval stay in Arizona to get on a diet and workout plan for the upcoming season. The plan initially worked. Sandoval lost fat and built muscle during the first few weeks of the program, but he gained all the weight back and then some when he was home for the holidays. By the time he reported for spring training, he weighed as much as he did before Operation Panda. By the end of the season, he weighed 278 pounds at over 30% body fat. His signature nickname and marketability derive from his rotund frame, as do most of the criticisms when he struggles. He reported to camp in the spring in 2011 at 240 pounds and down to 19% body fat, the best shape of his life. He was the starting third baseman as planned, and he was back in 2009 form. Unfortunately, at the end of a big April, Sandoval fractured his hand, knocking him out for about six weeks. During his time off, Kung Fu Panda 2 was released in domestic theaters, and it seemingly boosted his powers. When he returned in June, Sandoval went on a 22-game hitting streak. He earned an all-star bid and continued his success with an excellent second half. Sandoval's defense improved significantly too, perhaps due to his more nimble frame. His final numbers were the best of his career, as he tallied over 6 wins above replacement despite missing time. The defending champs missed out on the playoffs with Posey's sideline. Even with Panda's huge year, the Giants scored the fewest runs in the National League, wasting an elite pitching staff in the process. Sandoval started 2012 on a 20-game hit streak. Even then, the Giants were playing 500 ball. Things looked bleak when Panda broke his other hammy bone a few days later. He missed a little over a month, and fans and writers noticed that he looked a bit heftier in his return. Sandoval didn't quite keep up the same level of play, but he still earned a second All-Star bid. His consistently solid production helped spark a big second half for the Giants, who won the division comfortably. The Giants, for the second time in three years, are National League West champions. AT&T Park as we are set for Game 1 of the National League Division Series. The Reds slipped out to a dominant 2-0 series lead, and Panda and the rest of the Giants offense struggled. But even with three chances to advance at home, the Reds couldn't put the stamp on the series. Sandoval had some big hits in Games 4 and 5 to help the comeback but the NLCS started off the same way for the Giants. Down 3-1 in the series, the Giants turned it around again, only allowing one Cardinal run over the final three games. Sandoval homered in Game 5, and collected three more hits across Games 6 and 7, and the Giants made it back to the biggest stage. Game 1 of the World Series is the best game of Pablo Sandoval's career. And Sandoval hits it into center. Come on! One Giants and a home run.
Babe Ruth, Reggie Jackson, Albert Pujols, and Pablo Sandoval, the only players to ever hit three homers in a World Series game. The Pandas set the tone in Game 1, and the Giants only trailed for three innings during their sweep of the Tigers. Sandoval won Series MVP on the back of his huge Game 1. He got hits in each of the games, but it was far from a one-man show. It was a team-wide dismantling of the Tigers. These Giants looked like they'd fall short of the postseason at the break. They looked like they were cooked in the Division Series and then again in the Championship Series. But they pulled through, and Pablo Sandoval was a core piece. He set the Giants' record for hits in a postseason and redeemed himself for his past postseason struggles. Mission accomplished. The 2013 Giants regressed including Sandoval. He showed up to spring training more than 20 pounds overweight. Pablo, 5'11", and you tell me, he's listed at 240? All right, maybe so. Even though he just won World Series MVP, Sandoval really struggled through the middle of the season, with his OPS dipping below 700 more than once. With the Giants already out of contention by September, Sandoval got going a bit and finished the season on a high note. He had another three-homer game, but only tallied 11 other homers during the year. For a lot of teams, a year like 2013 would have symbolized the end of a contention window. But the even-year Giants were special, and they were feared. In 2014, they got off to a blistering 43-21 start, even with the slimmed-down Sandoval having a dreadful April. Funnily enough, when he got hot, the Giants went cold. From June 9th to September 1st, the Giants were 10 games under 500. This was Sandoval's best stretch at the plate in years, and his performance dampened what really could have been a disastrous stretch. Even though they fell out of the division lead, their hot start buoyed them comfortably into a wildcard spot. All that meant was that the even-year Giants had another winner-go-home game. They blew out the Pirates in their own house. Then they ran through the Nationals to get back to St. Louis. And they had no trouble with the Cardinals this time. Sandoval had a big championship series. And just like that, he was playing for his third World Series title. The 2014 World Series was a back and forth heavyweight bout. And Mad Bum's heroics are obviously the most memorable part. His performance tends to overshadow just how good Panda was that October. Sandoval had the tie-breaking hit in Game 4 and two of the Giants' three runs in Game 7. And of course, he caught the final out of Mad Bum's legacy-defining performance. If Pablo Sandoval was in his late 30s and this was the final time he stepped on the diamond, the story of his career would have never been forgotten. But the next few seasons of what should have been his prime were a total, self-inflicted character assassination. A few weeks after winning his third world title in five years, Sandoval took a five-year, $95 million contract with the Red Sox. Just like that, San Francisco lost a cult hero. And Boston gained a super villain. Pablo Sandoval was the bane of my existence for two and a half years. I didn't even want him on my team in the first place. The tweets will back me up. He was fourth on the depth chart for third base options coming into the 2015 season, but the Red Sox had just finished in last place and ownership cared more about selling panda hats than winning baseball games. So along comes Pablo Sandoval for $95 million. In his first season in Boston, he got suspended for liking pictures of some Instagram model during a game. There was a ridiculously handsome Red Sox podcaster who caught this and ended up tweeting it out, which led to him getting suspended. He'd go on to miss all kinds of time with foot injuries, knee injuries, ankle injuries, forearm injuries, elbow injuries, back injuries, and fucking pneumonia ended his first season in Boston. That was all just in 2015 alone. And how can we forget about the 17% body fat? After his 2015 season, we heard all about Pablo Sandoval losing weight. He actually said, I lost 20 pounds. He showed up to spring training in 2016 and he looked like he gained weight. And not only that, we were told 17% body fat, maybe 1700%, not 17%. And the one thing that stands out in my mind is that Pablo Sandoval said, and I quote, I don't got nothing to prove. I don't got nothing to prove, he said. You just signed a contract for $95 million, had statistically the worst season of your entire life in your debut season with the Boston Red Sox, showed up out of shape once again, and then told the fan base, I don't have anything to prove. Why? Because you won three World Series titles with the San Francisco Giants? Why the fuck do we, as Red Sox fans, care about that? Then his belt exploded in Toronto of April of 2016, and he only played in three games that year, missing basically the entire season after he got surgery on his left shoulder. 
Prior to his injury, he actually lost his starting job at third base to Travis Shaw, which prompted his agent to make the most ridiculous comment in the history of pro sports, asking the Red Sox why they, quote, leave the Ferrari in the garage. Then in December following the 2016 season, Sandoval did an interview with ESPN where he admitted to being, quote, so complacent after signing a $95 million contract with the Red Sox and that he, quote, did not work hard in order to achieve more and remain at the level of the player that I am and that I can be. Quote, for the people who were defending Sandoval for his shitty performance in Boston and blaming media for why he wasn't performing well, you can refer to those quotes where Sandoval admits to being a lazy piece of shit himself, and we didn't even need him to admit that to know that that's what was going on. It was obvious. Ultimately, the Red Sox would release him halfway through the 2017 season, eating $49.5 million just so that he would go away. Then he went back to San Francisco, you know, the team that he trashed on the way out and told some sob story about how his heart was still in San Francisco the entire time that he was in Boston. Just pandering 101. Anyways, it took him two and a half years to play one season's worth of baseball games that equaled out to negative 1.6 wins above replacement. The debate is over on who the worst contract in Red Sox history is. It is hands down, unequivocally, Pablo Sandoval. As a Yankees fan, I cannot overstate how much I enjoyed Pablo Sandoval's time with the Red Sox. Boston paid that money for these numbers. The icing on the cake for me is that he instantly went back to San Francisco and remembered how to hit. Before we return to the Bay, I want to shout out Jared for helping me with this video. You all know who he is and already follow him. Go check out Baseball is Dead to keep up with the latest MLB news. It's really a good time. Also, 90% of you aren't subscribed. My goal is to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. It's free, only takes a click, and you'll never miss my future uploads. Thanks. Sandoval wasn't amazing during his second stint as a Giant, especially during the remainder of 2017, though he was above average as a bench and platoon bat during 2018 and 2019, and that's more than he did on the Red Sox. The way he left San Francisco all those years ago left a bad taste in the mouths of some Giants fans, but his return was largely accepted with open arms. It turns out that on-field heroics last in the memory of fans longer than comments about leaving. Most Giants fans probably realized that paying him the league minimum while Boston paid the other 40 something million dollars was the best case scenario. His solid production also mended any ill will. The 2019 Giants were years removed from their contention window. The aging, injury riddled team entered July 36 and 47. For some reason, just for a month, they recaptured their early decade form. Base hit! This game is over! Drops the ball. They're waving it. Here comes the throw. The relay. It's wild. The Giants have won it. Swung on is a high drive into left. McNeil at the warning track. At the wall. Adios. Pelota. It's all over. They woke up on July 23rd with a 51 and 50 record. A 15 and 3 stretch propelled them within two games of the wild card. It was magical and the Kung Fu Panda kept the magic going for one more night. Sandoval drives on the left, back Garcia. It is over! And the Panda has won it! Four walk-off wins in six days. Pablo Sandoval, the prodigal son, the dragon warrior of San Francisco, has returned. This magic, this recapturing of a previous era, it didn't last. Sandoval tore his UCL a few weeks later. The clock struck midnight on July 31st, and the Giants returned to mediocrity for the rest of the year. A few days before his Tommy John surgery, Sandoval took one more at-bat for Bruce Bochy. The ovation he got feels like he never left at all. The Giants brought Panda back on a minor league deal for 2020, and he made their opening day roster, but he wasn't the same. He struggled until he was cut in September. Once again, it looked like he'd reached the end of his rope, but somehow, someway, as he'd done in the past, he found a way to keep it going. The Braves signed him to a minor league deal and added him to their roster during the final week of the season. Sandoval drew two walks against, well, 
guess who? Apparently, that's all the Braves brass needed to see, as he was added to the team's playoff roster as a bench bat to counter righties. He came to the plate four times in the NLCS against the Dodgers, which is kind of insane, considering he'd only had four for the Braves all year. Pablo Sandoval had an honest-to-god shot at contributing in the 2020 World Series, but the Dodgers came back from a 3-1 deficit of their own to put a damper on things. The Panda re-signed with the Braves in 2021, after a red-hot start as a designated pinch hitter, including three homers in his first eight at-bats of the year, headed to the bullpen, Pablo! Panda collected just one hit in June, then he was held hitless throughout July. He was traded to Cleveland at the deadline and immediately released. In a lot of cases, that would be kind of depressing, except the Braves got their NLCS MVP back in exchange for Sandoval, went on to win the World Series, and awarded Panda his fourth ring. Seeing that he won another World Series, DreamWorks decided that it was time for Kung Fu Panda 4. Sandoval played in the Mexican League in 2022, and is actually still playing pro ball for the Abu Dhabi Falcons of Baseball United. He hit the first ever six-run homer in their All-Star Showcase a few months back. Don't ask me how that works. I'm not sure if fans even a few years younger than me are going to remember the Panda. His marketability and clutch moments made him a huge part of the game I grew up watching. I hope this look back at both the good and the bad does his legacy justice. And I'll always root for a dude who's universally beloved outside of Boston.